Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. The UAV shootdown war continues in Kentucky. A study shows that air traffic controllers can be plagued by chronic fatigue. The Sportsman Pilot Magazine goes online. I'm Brie Cross, it is August 13th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The owner of a UAV that was shot down by a neighbor who claimed it had been spying on his sunbathing daughter has released a video of the flight. Unlike modern airliners, the small UAV has a flight recorder that continuously downloads a record of its flight to the operator's iPad. It's reported that UAV owner David Boggs says that the video proves he was not flying low over the home of William Meredith. Boggs says tracking data captured by his iPad proves that the aircraft was at 272 feet in altitude when it was blasted out of the sky. Meredith's story went worldwide after he admitted shooting down the UAV, claiming it had been flying low over his house and had taken video of his daughter in the backyard. Meredith is facing charges of wanton endangerment and criminal mischief for shooting down the aircraft. However, you have to admit that hitting a small UAV in flight with a shotgun at almost a distance of a football field is pretty good shooting. A study conducted by NASA at the request of the FAA shows that air traffic controllers' work schedules can lead to chronic fatigue, which could endanger the flying public. The study was undertaken after the NTSB made recommendations to the FAA and National Air Traffic Controllers Association concerning controller schedules, saying that they should assure the controllers obtain sufficient restorative sleep. The study recommended a myriad of corrective actions be taken by the FAA, and some have already taken place. Following some instances where the single control tower operator fell asleep on the job, the FAA now requires two controllers to be in the tower during the night shifts. Also, controllers can now take more recuperative breaks during their shifts if the workload allows them the time. On its website, the FAA says that in 2012, the agency implemented a comprehensive fatigue risk management system to manage controller fatigue. This fatigue risk management system includes policy and practice changes along with fatigue education to raise awareness about the personal responsibilities associated with managing fatigue. After the break, archives of a popular aviation magazine are available online. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The Sportsman Pilot Magazine was established for 30 years by well-known aviation writer and editor Jack Cox, and now you can access the archived back issues on the web. Jack Cox was a longtime writer for EAA Publications, and in 1981, Jack and his wife Golda started their own publication known as the Sportsman Pilot. The magazine quickly caught on with the aircraft restorers and home builders. Cox was able to delve more deeply into the various historic and technical aspects of aircraft construction, restoration, and aviation history. When Jack passed away in 2011, the magazine ceased publication. Fortunately, Golda Cox has given permission for issues that are out of print to be digitized and made available publicly online. Jim Cunningham, Digital Projects Librarian at Illinois State University, obtained a grant from the Wolf Aviation Fund to accomplish this 
and is pleased to announce that 20 issues of Sportsman Pilot are posted online to read or download. To access them, go to www.archive.org, click on the magnifying glass icon, and enter Sportsman Pilot in the search box. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update. Last week, we discussed the concept of our Airborne Partnership Initiative. This week, we'll provide a synopsis of the building process. The Airborne Partnership Initiative is a plan developed by ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to build a synergistic industry-wide aviation aerospace news program. It is no longer simply enough to make our business successful. It is our intent to build a successful structure by which this business and our valued partners can collectively have a positive impact on the industry that is impossible on an individual basis. A partnership between ANN and others in the aviation aerospace industry offers more exposure, a greatly lessened strain on individual resources, and the pivotal advantage of starting out with what is already a solid, professional, award-winning platform, which is Airborne Unlimited. Partners will have the ability to disseminate their near-immediate breaking news with each daily program and grow their outreach among their constituency and well beyond. All of this with a professional look and comprehensive reach of Airborne Unlimited. Most of all, as swiftly as Airborne has grown in the last few years into what we now call Airborne Unlimited, our expansion efforts are seeing exceptional success, which allow partner organizations to reach far more than their conventional audience. The Airborne Partnership Initiative is built through the recognition that aviation and aerospace needs a common voice that speaks within and beyond the aeroverse we occupy. After these messages, Squadron Command changes in flight. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI-340 Quattro tso airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Dambusters of Strike Fighter Squadron VFA-195 held an airborne change of command above the aircraft carrier USS George Washington on August 7th. During the ceremony, Commander Guy Snodgrass relieved Commander David Pollard as commanding officer. Airline consumer complaints filed with DOT's Aviation Consumer Protection Division during the first six months of this year were up 20.3 percent from the first six months of 2014. That's a total of 9,542 consumer complaints during the first six months of 2014. Orbital ATK successfully completed its critical design review with Lockheed Martin and NASA for the Orion launch abort motor August 6. The solid rocket fuel motor is designed to propel the crew capsule away from the main booster in a launch emergency. Six U.S. Air Force F-16 fighter aircraft and about 300 personnel arrived earlier this week at Encirlik Air Base in Turkey. The Pentagon Press Operations Chief says the F-16s will begin flying missions against ISIS in the coming days. The Civil Air Patrol has awarded Cadet Colonel Matthew Jackson of the New Jersey Wings Twin Pine Composite Squadron the coveted General Carl A. Spatz Award. Jackson becomes the 2000th recipient of the award which was first bestowed in 1964. Well that's our trip around the patch, now let's move on to the rest of the news. Gulfstream reports that their G500 has now completed five test flights since it first took to the skies on May 18th. 
During more than 15 hours of flying, the aircraft achieved a top speed of Mach 0.80 and a maximum altitude of 38,500 feet. The aircraft's longest flight was more than four hours. Gulfstream's Dan Nail said, quote, The first five flights exceeded our expectations, and they demonstrated that our testing facilities on the ground are having very real benefits in the air, allowing us to identify and address issues before they're ever seen in flight, end quote. Gulfstream announced the G500 and G600 family of aircraft in the fall of 2014, and programs for both aircraft are progressing well. As the first G500 flight test article undergoes modification, two more are preparing for flight, and a fourth is in production. Additionally, the first G600 flight test aircraft has begun the initial stages of production. Gulfstream anticipates certification of the G500 in 2017, with entry into service in 2018. The G600 certification is slated to follow in 2018, with entry into service in 2019. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.